Surge, are, are, are you or, or were you uh, a gamer? Um, for, for a bit in my history, I was a gamer. Um, I, <laughs> I, got, um, I, was, I was doing some music for a video game. Uh, well, let, let's start back. In, in my early 20s, I was a gamer. I had a PlayStation and all of that stuff, and I was playing way too many NBA Jam games, and my fingers got really messed up. This is before starting touring with System Over the Down and stuff. And then at one point, I realized, look, this is getting really addictive. I shouldn't be doing this. You know, I'm hurting my hands and I need my hands to play, etc. So I stopped gaming. <laughs> and then there was a company uh, years later that offered me, uh, you know, to do some music for a video game. And I'm like, oh, that's great. I'd love to see what you guys have and stuff. And then I realized I don't have a console and I was embarrassed. And they're like, so they sent me a console and some games. And then what do you think happened? I was up until like again. 10 p.m. and like in bed, just going crazy. And again and again, getting addicted to it. So I got rid of it again, you know, and here we are doing this song. <laughs> so this is one of these things where you kind of can't get high off your own supply. Exactly. Exactly. So, so I'm not doing games now. I'm not doing them now, but I, I love doing the music for them. Yeah. And, and I like, I was going to say that not the first time you've scored a video game. Um, Midnight Star, was it the, the, the most recent to this? Yeah, that was a, well, that was a full score to the video game, not a song. Whereas this is just, you know, I'm participating in, in a song to the game. Um, but that one, I, I was hired as a composer, so that was a full score. Before that, I had done some other stuff for um, a, a song or two for a video game by John Woo. Uh, uh, I, what was it called? Um, uh, I can't remember, but it was a really cool video game. It was a shoot 'em up video game uh, by the director, John Woo. And um, yeah, some other games here and there. Yeah. Well, let, let's talk about Metal Hellsinger. And this is this is also a first person shooter. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong and please add detail, but this is a demon blasting game. <laughs> I haven't played it, so I don't know. <laughs> but yes, I, I think I think you 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 wouldn't be too far off, you know, taking that guess. Yeah. It sounds like a demon blasting game, but the, but this is unique because you get more points, you get rewarded. Uh, you level up for blasting demons to the rhythm of the music that you created. Yeah. So and that I think that's one thing. That's that's one thing that sounds different about this game is is that you gotta get into the song. You gotta really be a part of the song and the rhythm in, in what you do to gain the points. So that's different than most video games, obviously. Yeah, it sounds it sounds kind of like guitar hero esque. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it does. And were you a guitar hero guy? I always wanted this. I'm not a musician. I was like, okay at the game, but the, you know, anybody who's a guitar player and a good guitar player, do you guys just like lay waste to, to guitar hero? I never played it. I wouldn't know. Um, but we've had a bunch of songs with system, even, even my solo stuff on guitar hero, which people love. And, and I really appreciate that, but I never even played it. What is the song that we're going to have to what what how, how does how is that like how's the rhythm like i mean if there's like a demon coming at me and i have to go to the rhythm of the music like i don't know if that is actually going to work out for me killing it um, right how's it go yeah. well first of all, the song i worked on with uh the composers two feathers uh elvira and and this other guy they, just amazing uh music um so they they've done the music and i i, I only did the vocals um and okay. uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So I didn't compose the music, um, but it's really, really incredible, really fast, really heavy, um, very interesting, uh, very progressive, I would say. And that's what I really dug about it. That's why I decided to, to join and, and be a part of it. Um, I really loved it. I love this song, um, but it's seven minutes and it takes you on this crazy, crazy journey. And it's very fast and very rhythmical. So your fingers will probably you will lose some ligaments likely. Yeah. I can imagine. I mean, I just just imagine. I'm imagining doing it to chop suey, and that sounds like something that would be painful. Um, you know, I, all this kind of new media, and and I mean, I guess there's old media. I mean, it provides so many opportunities for musicians, and I mean, there aren't a ton of rock stars, or I guess I'm sure there's more than I know that do film scoring and uh, and a lot of music scoring, but those that 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 do are very highly regarded Trent Reznor, Danny Elfman, and you are in that group. 
Um, what what drew what draw, what draws you to doing stuff other than creating music, but adding to to film and video soundtracks? I've been wanting to uh, score for many many years, and you know, uh, over time, got more and more into it. And and it's a whole different industry within the music industry, obviously, and uh, with a separate set of decision makers that are film studios and and producers and directors, etc. And I got into it because my uh, creative outlay was so much more than songs that I could do for myself or with System of a Down and, and in so many different genres, in so many different uh, kind of colors. Uh, and because of that, you know, I always thought I, I need to find a good home for some of these stylings that I have. But ultimately, it started with that kind of idea that, that I really f- want to find other ways to place my songs but or my music and it turned into actually you know working uh, fresh on projects not necessarily using an existing library which sometimes i do but um uh and and just kind of figuring out the tone of a film you know or a tone of a series that i'm working on and working with a director or the creatives in that project and uh trying to come up with something creative that hasn't been done uh, in terms of sound uh but 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 also something that works perfectly for that series or for that film. I think it's a unique thing and I really, really enjoy it. Now, one thing I've always wanted to do in my life was make a completely different record each time I may, make it. With soundtracks, I've literally had my dream come true because every film, every series is a completely different sound palette. Yeah, and that's, uh, I guess, hard to, would be hard to do, at least from the expectations of the fan and the music label uh, doing it with a band to create something completely different. Um, have you ha- ever had any friction with? Um, I mean, you mentioned John Woo. I don't. I don't know if you've done a John Woo uh, film, but I mean, he's very, very particular about his music. Have you had any? Uh, you know, completely different ideas with, with the filmmaker about what you brought to the table and what he was expecting. It happens sometimes. I'm. I'm very. I've, I've become really attuned to trying to understand the filmmaker's vision musically so that there's not this gap in, you know, understanding. And I, what I do is before I even jump into visuals, I like to create some themes and uh, do a little suite of themes that I can share with the filmmaker and see if we're in the ballpark, you know, is this what you're, is this what you have in mind? Does this resonate? And so that way, it's not a complete uh, departure. Now, on a few projects that I did, there, were, there was one project in mind, I won't name the director of the film, but years ago, I did this one thing where I literally just jumped into it because they were, you know, I had time and they were like lagging and there was a lot of balls up in the air and stuff like that. And I ended up doing a lot of work. And then, you know, there was also a language barrier uh, with the filmmaker. And it just turned out to be completely different expectations. It wasn't so much that the music was off. It was that the way of composing it was completely off. And the expectations were different. So kind of rounding that out and trying to find the common ground was a little difficult and and, and annoying for, I'm sure, both parties. But it worked out in the end. Well, can you give us uh, some, because I think this probably... You know, goes under the radar of a lot of uh, you know, rock fans. You love the musician, but you don't know maybe what films he scored. Can you give us a couple of recommendations of films um, that are your favorite, either for the music uh, and or because you love the film uh, that you've done? Oh, for my stuff, um, there's there's this film uh, called Furious, The Legend of Kolovra, which was a Russian film um, that was a huge action film uh, that was uh, 1200 the dating was about 1200 when Batu Khan invaded the Russian lands. And it is a really, really over the top action score, which I really enjoyed doing. Um, I love working on uh, Crime Scene 2. I'm working on Crime Scene 3 now for Netflix. Uh, Crime Scene 2 came out on Netflix in December of last year. Very dark, moody, but also some 70s music, disco and stuff like that based on where things were happening in Times Square in the 70s. Um, of course, it's a serial killer film, so it's, not, it's got darkness. Um, uh, I mean, there's there's so much, um, uh, you know, uh, over the last couple of years. I, I just finished doing a score. I think I can talk about it now um, for Down to Earth with Zac Efron, season two, 
on Netflix coming up. Oh yeah, that's the uh, that's his kind of documentary where he explores the world. Yeah, explores the world with a, a, a an ecological, a progressive ecological edge, trying to show people doing good things with the environment and commerce and different things. But it was totally this season two. They were um, they were in uh, Australia, so it was COVID lockdown. So the whole series is in Australia. It's very interesting, actually. Um, I'm working on two other series right now um, that I won't name, but um, they're they're really cool series. And this film called Intent to Destroy that I did with my friend Joe Berlinger years ago. Um, this film called uh, I Am Not Alone that I scored and, and uh, co-produced as an executive producer. Truth to Power, which is my own story that I scored. That was kind of interesting. Scoring a film about yourself was was kind of was kind of really it was weird, but it was it was very interesting. Um, so yeah, it's 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 really cool. I love scoring. I love I love that world. I love being involved with uh, creative directors and 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 kind of having this really great uh, you know um, conversation about what they have in mind and and getting excited and finding like a unique instrument that I've never used before. Something to kind of really focus onto this new project. You know. Um, I like that. I like that. It's it's just because you know when you when you're a songwriter, when you're a composer, you can do so much. You know, you can you can literally disguise the limit as to your creativity. And and I've done that with all of my music and and with what I've contributed to system. But when it comes to composing, it's nice to just have some lead, some idea of something else to focus on, and that opens up a whole new world of music for you. And, well, yeah. and it brings out new music from you. I, I, I forget what I was, uh, there, there was some Netflix show. I, I just, I was thinking about how much music adds, adds to a film. And I forget what it was, but it was a modern film that used Hitchcockian style music. Um, and it really, it made me think about the movie in a whole new way. I apologize. That's just kind of a, a personal oh, thing. No, no, no. And, and you know what, Todd, I, I really love films that, give you a completely unexpected soundtrack to what you're expecting, right. like a time period piece with modern music or Sofia Coppola did that. Um, like just so many, it, it, that's kind of cool too, where it's not expected and, and it just kind of brings it into the modern world. And there's so much that can be done. Music music can also get in the way. I, um, you gotta be careful when you're scoring and do a good spotting session with the director or the filmmaker so that you know where not to put the music. And that's very important as well. Well, yeah, I, I don't know where you guys are on new music from System of a Down. I just know, you know, I hate I hate to hear it when uh, a musician seems to have, a songwriter uh, seems to have kind of, I don't know, come up to the limit. Like Billy Joel, and he has, you know, Billy Joel hasn't written music in, in years. And he says, I'm not I'm just not writing anymore from one of the great songwriters of our time. And it's just nice to hear that people have other outlets, even if, they're not doing, they're, you know, they're not feeling what they normally do. Uh, but do we have plans for more system music soon? Not at this time. Not at this time. And when we do, you know, you'll be the first to know. All right, very cool. <laughs>